We know for a fact that you can get some amazing deals on entry-level bikes if you look in the right places. In today's episode though, we're, uh, we might be pushing it. I found a bike from Walmart for $248 and we're gonna well, see how good it is. I'm gonna go and get it now, from Walmart. It's a little known fact that Jimmy is banned from the USA for stealing a cabbage cream egg. So we've replaced him. I'm here with Dr. Danny instead. Is it in stock? I think so, it better be. We don't sell them by the box. Okay. Like, we don't have any more in boxes here. Boxes, no, we're not allowed to for some reason. Really? Last time someone sold her in the box and he's not here anymore. Wait, what? <laughs> I got you a present. What? I got you a present from America. Have you? Where? I don't think I, I don't think I like the sound of this. Ta-da! What's got pedals? Let's get stuck. Oh, oh, oh. Shimano? Okay, yeah. I've, I've heard of Shimano before. Where do you get it from? Walmart. It's a Walmart bike. So this is made by a company called Kent. It's a 700c gravel bike, drop bar, one of the cheaper drop bar bikes that they sell out of Walmart in the USA. It only cost $248. Wow. Or you can buy it for $23 a month. Probably for the rest of your life. <laughs> there is definitely a red flag. <laughs> Too heavy. This is a definite red flag. Why? It fits you and most other people in the world. You are uh, a big passionate believer in bike fit. So there is not a chance in hell that you think this is appropriate. So yeah, this is a bit weird. It does say that it will fit anybody between five foot four and six foot two, which is a pretty big range. Uh, the frame looks massive. Should we measure it? Well, well, at least we're good test dummies for this bike because you're five foot four and I'm six foot two. Yeah. 55 centimeter top tube. So it would fit someone normally who's about five foot 10, five foot 11, not five foot four. It's got some bike fit information on it, which is actually uh, contrary to the four foot, five foot four, six foot two. Very odd. I wonder if they, is that actually theirs? Yeah, it is, it's got their branding on it. I was thinking maybe Walmart put that on and was just like, yeah, we'll just stick it on so more people buy it. That seems a bit bonkers, doesn't it? Usage, ride for fitness and longer distances. Frame, sturdy steel frame. 14 speed Shimano shifting. Put your phone away. Alloy rims with 700C by 40 tires. Uh, it's customary to weigh the bikes, even though it doesn't really mean anything. But what I do know about this bike is it is a hell of a lump. 15.65 kilos. That is the heaviest bike we've ever weighed. So a quick rundown of the first impressions of this bike. Now we've got it in the stand. Frame looks pretty nice. It's a steel frame, it's a steel fork. We have a quill stem with a Shimano stem system on, which is a friction shifter on one side and then an indexed seven speed shifter on the other side. An inconvenient place to have gears compared to the modern style of like STI shifters where you have all the levers right in your hands. Uh, and then you have separate levers on these drop handlebars, which are I mean, an interesting shape. It's like a classic drop shape, but not a nice classic drop shape. Both of the brake levers here, work absolutely fine. Then we have these cross stop levers, so you can also activate the brakes when you're on the tops here. Uh, the left one works fine, which is the front, and the rear one doesn't work at all. So naughty Walmart for selling this bike like this. Obviously this can be adjusted and we can get them working, but not ideal if you've just bought this and you don't know what you're doing. There's a sticker on the frame that amongst other things says, do not ride at night. There's a question, there's a phone number there. You can, you can talk to them. Phone them, ask them why you can't ride it at night. Nice foamy padded looking saddle. Unbranded chain set. This is a double and I'm sure if we count up the gears, Jimmy's gonna be very upset with the gear ratios because they look absolutely massive. The mech uh, is, is not Shimano. What does it say? Kazumu, Kazumo. Rear mech, however, is Shimano. This is the one that, which is a step lower than Turney, which we've had on other entry-level bikes in these videos. We then have mechanical disc brakes, so cable actuated, and 140 rotor on the back, 160 on the front. Wheel set is made by Vitesse, 700C. They've included reflectors and 40 mil tires, as we said. Tires, actually, they've got some tread on them. They seem fine. They've also given us Schrader valved inner tubes. Considering this bike has been in a box all the way back from America, the shifting is spot on. The mech hanger was straight. This index shifter didn't need any cable adjustment at all. The friction shifter on the left-hand side, however, for the front mech, the limit screw means you can shift it over the chain ring. So that needs to be adjusted. Basically, there's a limit screw that needs to be set on the front derailleur to make sure you don't push this too far and then your chain comes off the other side. 
that needs to be set up and tightened up a little bit. So they haven't done that in the shop, which is a shame. Oh, the best thing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> My favorite bit, kickstand. Bang it. Should we go and ride it outside? Yes. Wide. Right, gear test. Surprisingly good, even though the shifters are in an inconvenient place, as I mentioned. The problem with them is that the ratios are just not suitable for a beginner. If you bought this bike, it's a low price bike, you need easy gears because your fitness is probably not gonna be there yet. Even if you do other stuff like running, this has just got two massive chain rings that don't even have that much difference in between them. So you shift it and it barely changes. Having said that, the positive is that the friction shifter on this side is really smooth, really nice. Yes. Good chunk. But the location of it, because it is there, you know, yeah, fine, it works. It'd be better if it wasn't there, wouldn't it? Yes. We didn't notice this in the studio when we were shooting earlier, but the front wheel is drastically out of true. And it's because a spoke is bent. And we're not sure whether this happened during transit or it was already like this. I didn't look at it that much when we bought it from Walmart straight away. Check that out. I think we can give them the benefit of the doubt and it is just bad luck, potentially. I mean, it was in a cardboard box and got flown here. So can't go too wrong with steel spokes. We've been riding a while now. Brakes have been bedded in because they're brand new. I am on a rim brake road bike and we're gonna do a brake test, which involves cycling as fast as we can at the tree in front of us, which is about 100 meters away, and then braking as hard as we can. It's on gravel as well. This isn't a road ride, this is gravel now. Well, it's a gravel bike. So I've got gravel tires, you've got road tires, and I think you're gonna win some. Three, two, one, go. Okay, second tree. Oh, and brake. As predicted, rim brake wins. Rim brake wins. At this price point, disc brakes are unnecessary. I don't know why. Why? This should be a rim brake bike. Yeah. You could argue though. Look how good the tri band was. But I just, uh, you could put hydraulic discs on this. Should be rim brake, shouldn't it? Yep. The tri band, it's a good bike. That is honestly what this test shows is how good the tri band bike that we tested, which we bought from Decathlon, cost 340 pounds. Fantastic. Whereas if you go as cheap as this, and arguably like uh, a decathlon, they don't make a bike that cheap, a road bike, drop bar. This is the limit of cost of performance. Anything lower than this, and you're really in unrideable territory. I think this bike, apart from the really weird handlebars, feels like a bike. I know that might sound ridiculous, but it does. It rides like a bike, it feels like a bike. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart and snap. And just, cause you want like that eBay bike you bought, like. You, you basically bend it, couldn't you? Whereas this, it's solid. It isn't going to just like crumble on you. Although it's that, safe. Although that wheel might, but like you said, that could be our fault. But Francis, that's a 5,000 pound bike that you've got. Can't do that with it, can you? Boom! Boom! Wow. I've worked it out. That's why it's got the Toppy brakes. Because you can't reach those. Well, one, you can't reach them, but even your gears are here. So your hands are actually really close all of a sudden to, to the gear ring. So I think a lot of people probably aren't using the drops. At all. At all. So it's actually just a really narrow flat bar. I reckon that's what a lot of people are doing is they're actually just riding it like this because your hands are right there. Because that's a feels miles to get to. All the more reason why they should- Make oh, them work. Yeah, make them work. Front or back, that's the back brake. Having now ridden this, there are three main concerns that I have with this bike. Number one, which we have seen before on entry level bikes, the lack of a replaceable mech hanger. So here, where your rear derailleur bolts on, it bolts on directly to the frame. The idea of having a separate piece, a separate removable hanger here means if you do have a crash or you lean your bike on the wrong side, instead of damaging the frame, you just damage the replaceable hanger and then you replace that, which is much cheaper than replacing the whole frame. This is a steel frame, so it does bend, but obviously you're fatiguing the metal every time you do that and eventually the frame will be done. Second bad thing, how are you gonna carry water? There's no bottle cages. So you're gonna be really thirsty every time you ride this bike, unless you carry a water in your pocket or Fidlock actually make a thing, I'll flash up a picture of it, where you can fit a bottle 
to any bike. Number three, the front end of this bike is extremely uncomfortable. The parts they've chosen are just not very nice. You have these weird kind of classic drop shaped bars, uh, but rotated in a really strange way. The shifters are put far too far forward. So you're really having to reach extremely far to get to them. And the cross top levers here aren't set up properly and are unnecessary, especially if you were to reduce the reach by having a nicer bar and stem or any system up here. The problem here is that if you were to upgrade any of this, it would represent a huge percentage of the cost of the whole bike. So it's kind of not worth doing. You might as well just pay a little bit more for something like the Triban. I know we keep talking about this Triban. We'll put a picture in this video here, but for not that much more money, you are getting a bike which is 10 times better. This bike says it's for someone that's five foot four to six foot two, and that is outrageous that they're making that claim. That is a big negative for the people selling this bike. The positives I think for this bike are, this frame is solid as can be. It's not gonna break. It feels so sturdy. It's a really comfortable ride. It's nice that it's got big, big clearance for big tires which just gives you more versatility. I think this bike has a lot of potential and because it has disc brake mounts of all of the lower priced bikes we've tested, I think this one might actually have the biggest potential in upgrading it to a banger of a bike. And that's a bold statement. Hey Jimmy, what we're gonna do with all these affordable bikes? To do a race. What kind of race? You're gonna have to subscribe to find out what kind of race. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon. What kind of race? What kind of race, Francis? Francis, what kind of race?